I have to start with the I was saying thank you for, for the organizers of inviting us because this is a very, I see, um, an exceptional situation. As far as I'm following the, um, the conference, I see that saying about Catholic uh, imagination or Catholic writing, uh, it really applies to the American Catholic writing. And uh, it seems like we are the only foreigners invited if am I wrong, uh, uh, correct me, but I, I, I think so, it, it, it looks like. So this, this is like, maybe there are others, uh, but anyway, there are very few of the, of the foreigners, and uh, as Catholics, as universal, I feel like you know, being kind of a curiosity here. But what came to my mind uh, from this situation, uh, I mean, very quickly, was that I should start with the explaining the difference of the um, Catholicism and writing here in America and in Poland. Uh, because uh, it, it happened, maybe accidentally, uh, that we have like two um, opposite poles in, uh, in um, defining Catholic writing uh, in the American environment and cultural environment and in Poland. General is saying in one sentence, um, the difference is based on, uh, on that that in America we have the Catholic writer living in the country of many religions and in the Christian culture, let's say, of many denominations. Uh, in Poland, we have, let's say, universal writer living in the culture which is not only predominantly, but totally Catholic. And uh, there are no other major religions in, uh, in Poland than Catholicism, and they are no other religions than Christianity. So there are no other denominations uh, in, uh, in Polish culture uh, and religious spirituality as it is existing currently and as it was in the history. Uh, even if there were periods of the plurality of religions uh, in, the, in the past of, of Poland, Catholicism was always the, uh, the most predominant and the most um, influential. So the difference is, 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 is really strong uh, because it means, uh, as applying to literature, uh, as applying to the performance of, of writing, um, it means that in, in America, being a Catholic writer is a choice. Uh, is a conscious and responsible, I believe, decision. Um, it is a, a kind of the uh, self-awareness, um, the identity expressed uh, significantly somehow. Um, uh, from the Polish perspective, uh, you, you see the situation is totally on the opposite pole. Uh, you are born in a Catholic uh, culture, you like it or not, you believe or not. Uh, and everything around the, the whole spiritual, cultural environment is marked by the Catholic uh, imagination. So you, you are born, you are brought up, you're educated because it's also about education. Uh, you're always um, are defined somehow by Catholicism. Even more, you're, it, it is not the Catholicism as a choice in, uh, inside of, of Christianity. Catholicism is synonymous, I mean, in the, in the kind of the subconscious of the Polish uh, citizen. Uh, is, is, a, is a synonymous of Christianity, and the Christianity is a synonymous of religion. And religion, even so, 
as a synonymous for spirituality. So you see how total, we can say, monolithic uh, is the culture, um, the, the spiritual environment for a Polish writer as comparing to, uh, to American. How does it apply to uh, literature? Well, first of all, uh, you use the language in literature, you use the language um, which is uh, full and it is somehow uh, perpetuated by the Catholic uh, symbolism, Catholic uh, sensuality, Catholic vocabulary. Um, the vocabulary had been made in Middle Ages and, and based on, on, on Latin um, and Latin words, and they are still being continued um, uh, in Polish philosophy, uh, in Polish, uh, let's say, intellectual, uh, intellectual life. But the um, position of uh, Catholicism or the Catholic imagination in Polish literature had been uh, changing through the ages from the very beginning and the beginning of Polish literature means the beginning of Christianity in the same time. So it has been changing um, uh, for, uh, for over a thousand years. And uh, we have the, the very specific situation now after all of those developments. Let me show you some steps in this, in this story. Um, tenth century, uh, we got the um, Roman Christianity from directly from Rome. Um, there is no Polish pre-Christian literature. There is no even there any other written documents uh, from the pre-Christian era. So whatever starts in literacy, we can say. Um, it starts with Christianity. And Christianity is brought to Poland as a synonym, synonymous of the Christian universal civilization, the civilization as such, we can say. So <clears throat> this is the, the first step, we can say, in, the, in, the, in the creating uh, the position of, of a writer. It is a uh, um, we can say an ambassador of the uh, universal civilization. Well, we, we, we didn't different, you know, make any difference of Western or not Western. Twelfth century, the beginning of the of the uh, uh, literature written in Latin by Polish authors. I mean, of Polish origin and referring to the Polish, let's say environment and, and Polish politics, Polish life, etc. Et but mostly the literature of Middle Ages deals with uh, religious subjects. So that makes the, uh, the finally, I mean gradually it creates the uh, intellectual philosophical vocabulary which will remain for the whole future um, in Poland. It is based on, on Christian uh, terminology and producing the uh, uh, um, uh, philosophical heritage for uh, Polish philosophy. 16th century, we have the beginning of the Polish literature in Polish on the, I mean, immediately on the highest point. Um, it happens like, uh, like a miracle, uh, we, we can say. Uh, we have the literature which is uh, as being written in uh, well-developed, I mean, matured Polish language, but based on Latin, post-Roman, we can say, forms. And it looks like the, the Polish language, the, the new Polish literary language, fits perfectly to those forms. 
it is like you know miraculously boring in uh, in, in this um, uh, Roman and uh, environment, and this is the moment when the so-called Catholic uh, imagination starts, um, because it uh, um, it is present in the whole uh, poetic language of the whole uh, of the whole literature with the Catholic. Uh, symbols with the Catholic um, images, with the uh, Catholic, um, uh, let's say, sensuality, um, emotions, uh, ethical values, etc., etc., and all of these uh, create the whole universe of the uh, of literature, and there is no alternative for that. Um, the nineteenth century, uh, after the eighteenth uh, century. Enlightenment, which wasn't very much influential in in, um, in Polish, and it didn't change very much in, in in the language. In the end of the 18th century, Poland loses its uh, political independence, and uh, the uh, cultural situation has radically changed. Um, we have no Polish institutions. We have no Polish publishers of of, of the time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Everything moved from Poland um, to abroad to uh, mostly to um, Paris. There's a group of romantic poets. It, it's another miracle, we can say, in, uh, in Polish literature. There's a group of Polish uh, uh, romantic poets um, in, 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 the, uh, in the first half of the 19th century living together in, um, in Paris and writing the literature, the poetry, which is considered to be the top of the Polish literature. The, uh, the top achievement, we can say, in, uh, in, the, in the message and in, in the form uh, as well. This is uh, absolutely modern romantic literature in forms, but opposite to the uh, Western romanticism, it is not the beginning, it doesn't mark, we can say, the beginning of secularism in, in literature because its essential, substantial message is deeply Christian. And the Christianity, the Christian philosophy, uh, they are trying to apply to the politics, economy, everyday life, uh, moral values, and everything. So it is like it is covering the whole intellectual universe. Uh, and as it is, as I said, as it is the the top of the of the Polish uh, poetry, uh, it became the most influential uh, style, or let's say stream, in the, in in, lit, in, in literature. Uh, the most influential, which influenced the the literature of the nineteenth and twentieth century, and even the current one. It is the part, as is, we have to be aware, this is also part of the, uh, let's say, under, well, undergraduate uh, common education in Poland. And the education in Poland is based on, on, on literature. Uh, so it is the, the common heritage, we can say. The beginning of the 20th century, the Polish literature is becoming European, universal, universal European. For the Catholicism, it means that it that the uh, it loses its religious essence, and it is becoming a cultural identity. Uh, they, we have the Catholic culture more than the Catholic religion. Polish literature of the 20th century. Uh, it exists under the shadow of two uh, totalitarian regimes, both of them anti-Christian. So the Catholic uh, 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 writer, the, the, the writer in Poland, you know, is defending uh, Polishness, Westernness, and uh, Christianity as well. And this is his, his mission, we, we, we can say. For that time, Catholicism is identified with moral and aesthetic uh, uh, and aesthetic values. Whatever was non-Christian of, of, of that time was considered as barbarian. So you see, 
the, 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 those two emp empires partitioning Poland, you know, Russian and Prussian, were considered the, the invasion of, of the barbarians, we can say. And it lasted like that after the war, uh, uh, during the communism era. Communism was, even it was the, the Western invention, it was considered uh, in Poland as a Eastern barbarism. Polish culture of the, of the communism era uh, is fighting, we can say, the, the Polish, lit Polish literature as well, is fighting with um, anti-Catholic trends, and it's, uh, and it's becoming uh, moral, uh, and it's becoming the uh, political weapon. And it is somehow prolonged uh, to, the term, uh, to the period after communism, uh, after the uh, transformation when Catholicism, Christianity, was used as a weapon in political uh, in political debates. What happens now at the at the very end of this story, we can say, um, in the new generation which uh, matured, we can say, in um, in the beginning of the of the post communist period, uh, my generation, Chris's generation, uh, this is the the beginning of the of the new opening, we can say, in using Catholic uh, imagination for the religious purpose in, um, in literature. Well, but differently than it was previously, not as a cultural identity, but as a personal, intimate, individual uh, self-recognition. Well, this is the current situation optimistically saying uh, there is also the pessimistic side, which we'll, we'll probably discuss in this, uh, in this panel. And uh, the beginning of, 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 of this new period in, um, in literature, uh, the new opening, we, we can say, it is still the continuity which began in the 10th century. Uh, that's it, yes. Thank you very much for your patience. And uh, I, I would like to introduce it a little bit in our guests. Um, the, we have the representative, we can say, of the, uh, of the Polish intellectual life here. Uh, Pavel Rojek, Dr. Pavel Rojek is a philosopher from the Jagiellonian University. Uh, professionally, he deals with metaphysical, metaphysics, but he's also an author of two very important books um, um, uh, recently published. The, 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 one, the first one um, tells about uh, the so-called Polish messian messianism. Uh, the Messianism, as a, uh, originally Polish philosophy, uh, derived somehow from that romantic poetry I mentioned, which is uh, uh, which was the the base we can say for the uh, intellectual education and imagination of uh, the Pope uh, John Paul II. So this is very. Very, it was. It really was an important book. The second one is is um, directly about art, and it's called avant-garde conservatism. He's dealing with the um, with uh, the avant-garde form in and the how, how to what we can say how to join the avant-garde form of the current um, uh, visual arts with the conservative and religious message. Uh, Eva Herschel uh, is a um, Polish-American uh, poet. She writes both in, in Polish and, uh, and in American, uh, and in, in, in English, <laughs> and in English. And she teaches um, uh, creative writing uh, in a college in New Hampshire. Uh, Krzysztof Keller uh, is one of the, well, one of the, uh, what we can say, Leading poets of this new uh, generation, uh, or the generation coming after the transformation, uh, but he's also uh, a professor of literature, and uh, he's a director 
and this is his role here as director of the Book Institute, uh, the government institution uh, from Poland. So maybe we start with the with Pavel, who who be talking about visual arts mostly. Thank you very much to, to Arthur for a uh, broad introduction to current issues in Polish culture. I would like to jump to, uh, to the current state of uh, Catholic culture in Poland. Uh, and, uh, and I would like to provide you a map, a guide to, um, to Polish discussions. Uh, and um, and I, I'm going to show you a visualization of some intuitions uh, from, from Polish uh, modern Catholicism, uh, and it is, uh, well, the dancing territories. I'm not sure whether the, the word territory is known to you. I, I didn't know this, this, this one. It's a portable image used uh, during uh, Catholic um, processions on Corpus Christi and, and so on. It's very important, so I'll, I, I'll when show you, you something. Which, when you lift the figure of Mary. Or for figure or image, yes, yes. Uh, I think it's 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 a symbol of uh, of uh, a, a kind of approach to to Catholic tradition, dancing territories. Okay, um, but first I'd like to start with a personal memory. Uh, since we start with uh, a, 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 a Polish uh, religious liter literature after Miłosz, I was on, I was on, the, on on Miłosz funeral in Krakow in 2004. Uh, that was a, a, a great adventure since uh, I was with my uh, with my wife and we found an open gate and uh, entered into a VIP area and I was very <laughs> close to Tom so it was great uh, great uh, event for us but there, there was a feeling among young young uh, Catholic intellectuals that well this this is the end of a of, a, of our era, of Miłosz era, end of 20th century, but we are go, we need to go beyond. Uh, uh, we can learn something from Miłosz and this generation, but we need to, to dig deeper and we need to find new ideas, new solutions for, for, uh, for uh, confronting, uh, to, to face uh, 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 secular modernity now. Since Miłosz was a symbol of fighting against communism, against uh, Nazism, and so on. But it, it, it was for 20th century. We need something different. Perhaps I, we were mistaken. Um, Arthur Rosman, who is present in this, this room, wrote a dissertation about uh, Catholic imagination in Miłosz. And uh, perhaps he's right. Perhaps Miłosz was something more than his, uh, his uh, political engagement and poli political... Uh, um, uh, political attitudes which were disputable, perhaps there is something more in, in his heritage. But I'll, I will not uh, stay with this. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to introduce um, a distinction, a kind of map, a kind of uh, guide to, 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 to discussion among, uh, among Catholic, uh, uh, concerning Catholic culture. I would contrast two approaches, two attitudes. First one is, it is called open Catholicism. I, I'm not going to say about uh, theological issues. I'm going to say only about images of cre Christian Catholic culture. So one very influential trend is uh, open Catholicism. It's, it's a label used in discussion both by supporters and critics of this uh, this attitude. Open Catholicism. Um, I, would, I would point five uh, five points uh, which constitute this this approach. It's very brief and rough, and, and well, it's it's, it's very personal personal uh, assessment. First one is um, this is a, this is a Catholic Catholicism which is very individual. I mean, it is attitude that uh, uh, religion must be ex must be uh, personal. First of all, must be personal experience. It's not a ritual. It's not a public affair. No, it must be something rooted in our in our uh, uh, in our uh, living experience inside us. The second point, um, second point is 
Well, uh, one remark more. This is this is careful with, of Miłosz and Kowakowski and many other people, uh, elite, intellectual elite of, of, uh, of Poland. So it's very... Uh, Zagajewski. Zagajewski and, and many others. I, I would yeah. j j I just just provide a very sk uh, sketch uh, outline of this of this attitude, but it's very influential, very very important for Polish culture. Brilliant person. First, individ individualism. Second one, intellectualism. I mean, they they were uh, they were uh, well. They 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 always complain. On, on the shallowness of Polish Catholicism, that, that, that it's, it's always uh, uh, emotional. It is, uh, it's not, not deep, it must be even more intellectual. Uh, third point, uh, yes, it follows from this criticism of Polish traditional Catholicism. Both uh, current Catholicism, I mean mass uh, folk Catholicism in Poland, which is non-intellectual and perhaps very emotional and so on, uh, but also criticism of traditions. I mean, first of all, uh, this um, th this what is called uh, sarmatism. It is a very complicated phenomenon of 16th, 17th, and 18th century in Poland. Mixed mix of uh, religion, politics, art, literature, and and everyday life, and so on. It is evaluated as something completely uh, with, with not not. not um, Something which uh, which should be deleted from from the Polish culture, so, which is uh, which is in fact uh, um, uh, which which must be overcome. Oh, that's that's, that's, the, that's the, the good the good word. Um, and Polish romanticism, especially Polish messianism, which is completely recognized as as very dangerous for Polish, uh, for, for for Catholics for, and for religion in this this kind. And there are. Two uh, important characteristics: one is political and one sociological. The first, uh, they, in general, they support Polish transformation. I mean, transformation from communist communist regime to uh, uh, li liberal democracy, uh, po Poland in the United, uh, European Union in later and so on. They were, uh, uh, they were, um, uh, they were. Um, uh, they supported this. Uh, Josef Tischner, Father Josef Tischner, one of the leading leading figure in this movement, he even uh, appeared appeared in the advertisement of, of Polish Liberal Party uh, during elections, uh, personally. Yes, and it was very strong engagement in political political topics. And the last thing, uh, they were establishment of Polish Third Republic. They were elite of, uh, of uh, our state and our, our society. Uh, take a look. <laughs> there, were, there were a few journals of, uh, very characteristic to this, to this movement. For instance, Więź Bound. And uh, editor-in-chief of this journal, Tadeusz Mazowiecki, became the first non-communist um, prime minister in Poland. That's great. Catholic intellectual, which became po politician, very important. Uh, the next, the next journal, Znak Sign, uh, here with Zygmunt Bauman, uh, uh, ed uh, editor in chief of Znak uh, monthly is now is now uh, deputy prime minister in, currently Jarosław Dobi, and so on. And and, and the most striking, uh, Tygodnik Powszechny, it's a news, newspaper. Uh, and he, uh, deputy editor in chief of this journal, Krzysztof Kozłowski, became became a director of Polish security. It's amazing. It's like, think about your Catholic journals, like Image or uh, Presence, and and that <laughs> and CIA, yes, and it's something, like, it's something like this. So, uh, and there was a natural uh, resistance against this. Open Catholicism establishment uh, engaged engaged in, in in current politics, and there is no common name for this movement. Very broad and very uh, 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 many differences. Uh, by, by the way, I would call them radical, radical Catholicism. I'm not sure whether it's whether it's a, it's a good label, but let me let me use it. Radical Catholicism is opposite to. 
to this open. It's not closed catholicism. No, no, of course not. But it is. It is. It seeks something, uh, something deeper and something more uh, substantial. It is. Is and it criticize uh, this um, uh, this uh, weakness of Catholic attitude towards modernity. It, we, we, they are looking something something more solid. Uh, and R, first, non in Catholicism is, is, uh, is thought as something which, of course, includes personal attitude, includes, uh, includes uh, experience, uh, inner experience, but also Catholicism must have uh, public expressions. It is a body of Christ which is visible. It must be something which is embodied, embodied in, in practice, including the public practice. And it must be somehow political, not on speaking our own voices in public sphere, not only translating our ideas into uh, secular uh, secular idiom, but speaking in our own our our own voices. The second point is uh, again uh, not in irration irrationalism, but rather no, non intellectualists in this sense that uh, they usually. Uh, Reevaluate, for instance, uh, emotions. Reevaluate um, uh, rituals. That rituals are not uh, they are not for children only and for weak people. No, they are essential for Catholic Catholic identity. Rituals, which are well, uh, not trans, not possibly trans translatable into uh, uh, intellectual categories. Uh, and it means that we need to re re rediscover, republish. Tradition and uh, first of all to reevaluate uh, Polish folk Catholicism, which is which might be a, a, a point of inspiration, and not only criticism. That it is something important. That it's something uh, which which is very valuable. So we need to uh, somehow understand our our fellows, our workers, Catholic workers and Catholic peasants, and they are much more interesting than Catholic intellectuals in many in many aspects. Uh, and also, it is the discovery of Polish tradition. I, I said about two, Sarmatism. Krzysztof Keller is one of the most important authors who uh, proved that uh, Sarmatism might be a point of inspiration nowadays. So it, it's, that it is something very important for, for Catholic culture. And Romantism, Polish Romantic Messianism. I, I, I wrote a book about, as, as Artur said, I wrote a book about Romantic messianic influences into John Paul II, showing that it is a legitimate, uh, legitimate current in, in Catholic thought that might be understood now as something which is completely, uh, completely modern in the, in the sense that, uh, for instance, they anticipated many theological ideas which were developed in 20th century, in 19th century. So it's 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 completely different different uh, different picture than, than usual. Uh, and, and the political dimension, criticism. Criticism of Polish transformation and, uh, well, it's a new wave. People who uh, see, uh, see uh, the, the, the disadvantages of, of this model which we, which we adopt in Poland. And the last one is, uh, well, it's definitely not establishment uh, attitude. It's, it's counterculture. Counter it's a kind of rebellion. Uh, rebellious attitude uh, inspired by, by Catholicism, and it's, in this uh, sociological dimension, it is uh, something which is uh, fighting with some some uh, existing 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 institution, even in Poland, which is shaped by Catholicism, of course. Okay, uh, this is a and some as usual in Poland, we have many 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 uh, intellectual groups. Which uh, express themselves in uh, in journals in in, in a very toasty journal in, in Russian. That is a, a very uh, fat fat journals with, with, with which uh, concern politics, arts, literature, theology, and, and everything. One of the, the most important was Fronda. That, uh, that was a journal. Journal which 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 first articulated this uh, this this attitude. I would just show you a few. Uh, then it's, uh, the team uh, from the team sp uh, split it into into different uh, different uh, 
different journals, and one of them is 40 and 4, completely, <laughs> I think, not trust. <laughs> It, it, it cannot be understood, and, uh, except, in, except in Poland. So uh, it's, it's a wonderful journal. I think it's uh, ex exceptional in global, in global, uh, global scope. And uh, next one, um, uh, political theology. It's, it's based in, in Warsaw, very influential, um, um, a very influential group. And uh, my own journal for a few years. I was uh, editor in chief, uh, Presie. Uh, do you see this sign in? Yes, we, we, we accused we accused Polish uh, Polish intellectual circles that they made uh, uh, they uh, uh, they they killed the prophet. Yes, they, they made something like McDonald's from, from the, 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 the heritage of John Paul II. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, now uh, I will skip a, uh, names and covers. Concerning this 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 radical Catholicism, I just uh, no, I, I, I we have no time to 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 to, to do that in details. Uh, okay, it's only faces. <laughs> Andrzej Choruba, uh, uh, Andrzej Choruba, uh, influential novelist, uh, filmmaker, producer, uh, and his no his novel Farciarz, which is uh, the self portrait of this young Catholic professionals. Facing with secular modernity in Warsaw. Um, another one, uh, Marta Kwaśnicka, essayist, very uh, beautiful piece about uh, Saint Jadwigas and Hedwig, Polish king, not queen, Polish king. She was a king, and uh, searching uh, patterns of sanctity and linking between medieval times and, and, and current state of, of Poland. Uh, the next one, Jakub Lubelski, also novelist, but he wrote. Mm, uh, he published a collection of essays in which he searched, uh, he, he read Polish non religious authors as authors who reveal hunger of God. Yes, it's a very interesting uh, manifest of, of, uh, of some kind of Catholic uh, criticism. Uh, uh, but it's like sucking the breast. Because, yeah. uh, yes, I think I, I decide <laughs> hunger. Does, uh, yeah. Uh, I, could, I can't, I can't uh, say something more now. And uh, the, the, the youngest from, from this, uh, Adam Leszkiewicz, a, a poet who, who wrote uh, a Phantom Head, it's a, it's a very strange uh, poetry. And here, and, and perhaps it's, 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 a sign of, it's a sign of new approach, because here there is no this fight, fighting between radical Catholicism and open Catholicism. It's only Catholicism, which is a, which is not it, it. It is not declared. It is not. A, it's not a topic of his po his poetry, but it's a framework for it. Very interesting and, and also formally, very uh, postmodern. Say, uh, he mix uh, he mix uh, <laughs> high culture with uh, with pop culture, with uh, sport events and, and so on. Very very interesting poetry. Okay. Uh, I would conclude with a with a video. Uh, there are two artists, Jakub Wojnarowski and Jakub Skoczek, based in Krakow, young artist, uh, quite re recognized in Poland uh, among uh, visual art. As as every everywhere, I, I suppose, visual arts are usually uh, usually uh, critical towards religion and uh, national identity and so on. And they uh, tried to express these intuitions of radical Catholicism in the language of completely contemporary art. And there was a, there was a, a, a good opportunity to do, to do this. There was an exhibition in Poland concerning Polish, Polish identity a few years ago. And they, uh, and they made an installation of course, most artists were completely uh, hostile, hostile against against Catholicism, against Polish, Polish tradition, and so on. But they refused to take part in this uh, in this uh, exhibition this way and proposed something uh, something uh, original. And they made uh, they made uh, a room. I, I, I cannot uh, speak about everything here, but I, I just. Wanted to show you one one thing. They 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 made a 
installation uh, in, in the language of in the language of modern modern visual art and there was a no that's well actually it's not this <laughs> it's not, not the video one, it is still cool yeah. okay yeah. complete yeah. almost complete <laughs> Just about when you were showing the yes, video, showing video, the right. demon of the Okay, I just want to uh, uh, want to show one one of the pieces. They they made a complicated installation with uh, some text and uh, and and a sculpture, really strange sculpture. But I I would focus on video uh, presented there. Let's enjoy this video. Uh, I think it's quite interesting. Okay, to artists, yes, yes, and we, uh, okay, I skip the sculpture and. What do you see here? Polish girls. Polish girls, yes, what else? Uh, Territory. Okay. <laughs> oh yes, they, uh, they were. There was a video with four girls in uh, a folk outfit, uh, folk clothing, and uh, with a territory, and they were doing something. And so let's let 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 me show you. Oh yes. Apparently, they are shaking it. No music? No music, no music. Okay, that's, uh, I think, I think it's enough. What, what, what are they doing? How do you think? Perhaps dancing, but, uh, but you know, in the context of Museum of Modern Art, it, which is uh, usually uh, critical to religion, it was, it was something completely strange because it, it reminds something critical to religion. Girls which are shaking uh, image of Holy Mary means that they they trying to do something critical to religion. Shake it. Shake yeah. it. Shake it. Shake, Shake it. it. Of course, they are dancing. In 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 fact, it is a uh, it is a very old tradition, folk tradition in in Poland area, Kaszuby, and they are from small village. This these four girls are are from small village in Kaszuby, and it's 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 a, a document. It's a kind of documentary film video with this uh, strange uh, activity. They 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 have meetings and they have. Uh, 
um, uh, they, uh, there are competitions of these teams which are shaking their <laughs> this, these images. But well, the, the, the great thing was that uh, in the context of modern art, it shows something that, first, we, we do not know our own tradition. That's, nobody knows about this completely strange, uh, strange activity. Second, it is something strange. Let's make Catholicism strange again, that it is something su surprising. And uh, again, uh, more importantly, they are girls. You know, there is a tension between feminism and Catholicism, of course, but they are dancing girls with this, uh, with this uh, territory, and there is joyful, it's, it's something, something very, there is happiness inside this, yes? And so it is something, something which is not, tradition is, is a source of joy, not, of, not, not a burden, burden of tradition, no. It's something which is inspiring to, to dance, to, to make fun, fun, uh, fun things. So that was, uh, that was a kind of uh, trolling in, inside of this, uh, this museum of, of modern art, which, which I think was the, was a good example of um, expression of this, this model of Catholicism, that we need to abandon any of our tradition. We can take this tradition as a source of inspiration, as a source of joy, as a source of uh, making brilliant things uh, in, the co in the context of po postmodern culture. So that was the, that was the point uh, expressed by this, uh, by, this, uh, by this installation. Okay, thank you for, for, your, for your attention. <laughs> Thank, thank you, Pablo. We, we have got the introduction to the culture wars in Poland as well as the modern art, visual arts. And Eva is going to tell us something about poetry essentially now. Um, and she's, I mean, unlike Pablo, she's trying to, to say that even if it's not evident, um, in poetry, the, the Catholic declaration, it, it, it still exists subconsciously somehow. Eva? Okay, hi, thank you for having me here and I'll be as brief as possible. In fact, I wanted to start with a little anecdote. I have a first class relic here. This is a letter from Czesław Miłosz. Oh. They, they tried can to I steal it this? from here. <laughs> you can kiss it, you can kiss it later. And in that letter, when I was 20, I, I was visiting my mom in New York. This is his handwriting. I and I had to decide what to do next. My mom wanted to sacrifice all pennies she, she had so I can study in US. And I met one intellectual from Yale who told me to get into school, good schools, you need to have a good recommendation letter. Who do you like? And I said, well, I love Miłosz, write to Miłosz. So I wrote to Miłosz and I was too shy to ask for recommendation letters, so I wrote a letter. And he responded to my letter and explained simple things like what is undergraduate, graduate, which we didn't have. He told me actually to go back to Poland, never study in the US because he said <laughs> that they don't study primary sources, they go straight to secondary sources. And he also said that if I really want to be this ambitious person and intelligent, I should study Greek and Latin in Krakow. Oh. <laughs> or the second choice was to study with those guys, Polish literature. Oh. He had a high esteem of this uh, group of uh, academics at Jagiellonian Polish literature professors. And in the end, he also asked me to meet uh, Alan Ginsberg before I did, which I never <laughs> did. I have no idea how. So I will try to stick to uh, least obvious examples. Obviously, we have two legendary poets here, and I would love them. I tried to advocate, so they read actually today, uh, because they flew from Poland, that they read their poems, and they refuse, because I think... Fortunately, we have no time. Well, they are legends, and they are very humble, right? But you can actually Google them and find their poems. What I chose for my presentation is the poets who do not consider themselves religious, who might actually call a lawyer, after my presentation, if they hear I put them on those slides. Um, okay. More, more or less makes me think of this wonderful documentary uh, with Flannery O'Connor, uh, where, uh, you know, Flannery O'Connor is a little girl. It's my favorite thing about Flannery O'Connor. I think she was with sisters. I don't know how old was she, six? I don't know, maybe more. And she detested her guardian angels. Uh, guardian angels. She would get into a fist fights with her guardian angel just to uh, dirty his feathers. And that's what 
more or less, I think, of some of these poets, okay? Um, and I also wanted to clarify that uh, by religious sense or religious experience, I mean fundamental human experience that unleashes wonder. Wonder in an Aristotelian sense. So wonder is not that easy, cheesy wonder, okay? Not even going to Grand Canyon, okay? And experiencing wonder, it's actually a mode of inquiry that might even put you at unease or discomfort, okay? Uh, it's being true to a reality that you are experiencing. And in that sense, religious sense is not an escape from reality, but an affirmation of reality. And it uh, uh, leads, that kind of discomfort leads to passionate curiosity. It is experiencing this world as a sign of reality that is beyond its limits. I'm really ripping off of my favorite uh, priest, Alba Sete, And I have this double relic here. It's written by Giussani, who actually introduced me to Christ, okay? It wasn't really Polish Catholicism that saved me, but this Italian priest. And this is a copy that Albacete uh, gave to me before he died. So this is a double relic, okay? Um, okay, good. So the first poem, uh, I'll just read it, okay? Krystyna Miłobenska, uh, notice 1932, sort of a student of Karkovich, linguistic poetry, okay? Um, I confess the hairpins, brass buttons, wrist chain, metal ball pen, iron bars in my head, steel hoop gripping my heart, how these words rust, helicopter in my eyes, tanks in my dream, I don't remember any other scrap metal, I have sinned. And here, just I'll try to limit my observations, but if you notice, on the one hand, it's a very feminist view on the, of, of sins, right? On the other hand, these are feminist attributes, herpes, right? On the other hand, I think it's a critique of scrupulous conscience, Polish conscience. In fact, when I came to US and went to mass, uh, there were no lines in confessionals, there were no confessions. You could actually go only once a week. On Saturday, it was from 3 to 4. And every church I go to has the same thing. You have a chance once a week, unless you maybe call a priest, obviously before big holidays. Um, and I have to admit, I live in smaller rural places, right? I, I bet in New York you have a little bit more choices. In Poland, in fact, I go to Poland every summer. There are lines to confessions. And the Dominican, yeah. Dominican church that where I go to literally not just on Saturdays, on Sundays, you have lines of people. And I simply think, first of all, people uh, go there for therapy too. They go to confess, but also, you know, every Polish person that was deeply Catholic that I met in the United States also had a very scrupulous conscience and would confess sins you would never imagine you would ever consider con uh, confessing, right? And there's something about it. Polish sensibility that she is critiquing in a sense. Maybe it's a spoof of confession, or it could be even written from a perspective of a little girl with this first communion dress, going for the first time to confession and making a list. Um, the next poem, actually it's a, a representative of New Wave, uh, together with Zagajewski and other poets, Ewa Lipska. That was a movement that during communism wanted to oppose the new speak right, of the regime, and bring back beauty, simplicity, so the fox was the fox, right, so one plus two was three, okay, and uh, look at this poem, I do not know if I have the right to speak, to be silent, to touch the wounds, I pray without words, he knows. And it's interesting because Richard Krynicki is not a religious person, is actually very attached to Hebrew tradition. And uh, he actually, I think he worships cats only, okay? Yeah. <laughs> most of the time he remains silent. If you make an appointment with him, he literally said silent unless you start speaking about cats. He has seven of them. <laughs> and um, just look at the enjambment, okay? How disjunctive that poem is. And, in, with Polish religious sensibility, it could be a secular poem, right? But also because uh, there is a, a prayer, I pray, but I pray without. 
It's not an incarnate word, right? It's not the word that becomes uh, flesh. But at the same time, it's like Dickinson saying, I know he exists somewhere in silence, right? Um, and then the next poem also will tell you quite a bit about that movement of new wave. It's a very uh, sort of manifesto-like poem. And also notice that here a poet is still a bard, a missionary, has this romantic tradition, right? Is going to actually bring bread to people. How to write? To write so the hungry man thinks it's bread. One has to feed the hungry and write so the hunger does not go to waste. Uh, and I, I, I think I, I can leave the interpretation to you, obviously liturgical reference bread, but it can be also bread brought to common people during communist regime, right? Um, to oppose the ugliness of the newspeak, right? The bad taste of the newspeak. Okay, Marcin Świetlicki is in quite opposition, a representative of uh, another movement that came after New Wave, the first movement after the collapse of communism. It was called Brulion, which is scribbled, you know, not a final <coughs> copy, maybe a first draft. That's more or less what Brulion meant. They were very um, shocking. Like the, the, the poems that they published were shocking because they also relegated poetry to a lifestyle and to a private experience, okay? It was literally they wanted to see in Poland, they wanted to, in spring, they wanted to see spring, not Poland, okay? Uh, they were sick uh, of uh, viewing poetry or a poet as a missionary, okay? As socially engaged person. Um, and this is a little bit longer, maybe, would it be okay if you read it to yourself because for the sake of time and nod your head and I'll, I'll just go to the next page. Um, so he employs religious references, but it's almost like in reverse. Religion is just used as his private vernacular, okay? He's part of Krakow, and Krakow is a very religious city. You see nuns, you see churches open, you can go to mass every, every hour, literally, even during the week. Uh, so uh, this is how he embodies that tradition, right? It's in him, right? At the same time, he knows he's possessed, right? If Satan speaks uh, through me, God will still have mercy, okay? He's part of that tradition. But it is at the same time contestation, right, of elevated. He doesn't want to elevate God, right? He wants to bring it back to the quotidian. Uh, Marzanna Bogumiła Kielar, I would say it's a very beautiful nature, uh, nature kind of uh, immersive nature poetry. Um, would you prefer that I read or is it easier if you read? I'd like to hear you. Okay. Read. Enormous sea, as far as the dunes with its lips, ever against the skin of wind, as if against the other half of its being, steep empty saddles of waves, touched by the light which already turns back, slips out leaving behind the dimming scene. Gulls, wrapped in the wind, forced deep into the salty crypt where rain and snow drizzle, clouds like stones, steel gray, at the wall of the horizon, prayer without words, without a tomorrow. And that's really fascinating because you could say it's just a fascination, affirmation of beauty of nature, this momentous, you know, exaltation of nature. At the same time, you see it's a reverse cathedral. We have souls, we have crypt, right? But it ends on nihilistic kind of prayer, prayer without words again, just like in Krynitsky, but even goes further without a tomorrow, which is the, the essence of our faith is actually that we believe in tomorrow, life after death. This is a very momentary, and it almost comes unconsciously. She could finish earlier, uh, earlier, right? It would be a wonderful poem. And notice the brackets are very deliberate, right? Just like for Hume and other philosophers, it's what unconscious says. It is what is unknowable, we put in brackets, right? And think of dunes and the brackets also of nature. So that's an interesting that, uh, you know, unconscious comes out of, uh, out of her, out of the speaking voice. 
And we have an amazing guy, uh, Kaczyszyn Dytski, who is actually on the curricular of high school tests, you know, uh, high school students read him. He is sort of of Ukrainian uh, origin, actually grew up in the town where my mother, my, my, my mother and my grandmother came from. It's a very, very rural place, two kilometers from Ukraine, right? And that's how he reads. He actually venerates. Reading, he has this posture of actually bowing all the time, right? Um, Partially, it's an acknowledgement of his uh, illness, um, a very fragile poet. Um, and I'll read uh, uh, in, and I'm sorry, actually, I committed a great crime. I have been not telling you who translated these poets. And I'll tell you, tell you later, okay? Just to remind you. This poem is translated by fantastic translator Bill Johnston, okay? And the other poems, one was translated by me and yet uh, another, Elżbieta Wójcik Lis, but I will in, be informing you for the, for the sake of time, I'm kind of galloping. Um, well, spring. It's autumn, Lord, and I have no home. When I arrive in the Przemysl region to, the dig, to dig deep in myself and those close to me, when they tell me the tale of who chopped who to pieces with an axe, Ukrainian or Polak, who tossed who into the well that I am walking past? To dig deep in myself, uncover my true essence. But first I drink the refreshing water of that well. I give credence to family history, drink from it. As from a wellspring, I draw from the depths of their tail about monsters on both sides of the mirror. And I've not been without fault since I started writing in Polish against who. Uh, and what I want to just point to you is how he stylizes language, and it's quite characteristic of him. He's even described as Baroque writer, you know, how he stylizes his language into biblical one. And how many references here you see, obviously it sounds like a psalm. At the same time, a crisis at center, there is identification with Christ, also almost martyrology. And notice uh, a reference to Luke 9, 58. Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. But here he is the Christ, right? The speaking voice. It's autumn, Lord, and I have no home. We both have no home, right? I become you. And then uh, we have, well, obviously, encounter of Christ with, uh, there are many encounters of Christ at the well, right? Um, and it sort of becomes this very logical progression of those references. And then there is a reference to All Souls Day, autumn. That's when we dig graves. But we also dig into our mortality because he does have this obsession with death and mortality. And also, finally, you have I give credence to family history, uh, drink credo, credence, reference to, once again, uh, faith. Um, and I will leave it last line. It's quite negating everything I said, right? Without fault since I start writing in Polish against who, right? Because there is a difference when we pray for, and but we also pray against, right? So it's uh, something that I will leave uh, to your interpretation. Finally, the poet that I quite like, not only because I see her every summer, but a younger, much younger generation, Małgorzata Lepta, 1985, just won a very important uh, Gdynia Prize. And we'll just look at this one beautiful poem translated by, El by Elżbieta Wójcik Lis, who also translated several other poems I showed you. Easter field blessing division. We go with father to the fields, we hold small crosses of hazel and paper ribbons and holy water in plastic bottles. Our dogs run along fat with shiny fur. They scare foxes from between the birches. Father pushes the cross into the stony ground, bloody flesh, he says, and I think that in a few months, in the August heat, we will be harvesting wheat here. It is here that father will first tell us about death he will put on in the mask of the forest. Down in the village, the church bells ring. We return from the last field. Each of us tries to hold father's attention on herself. In the light of a tall bonfire, I consider the way we divide him between us, uneven, unjust. 
And here, just one comment, and then I'm off. Uh, and I, I, you know, I believe in actually your brilliance, so I don't have to interpret anything for you. But just to give you a context, you know, this uh, lab that comes from rural area, right? And which is seeping, you know, steeped in rituals, right? But she actually transforms the ritual uh, that was quite pragmatic for her father onto something very symbolic. And her poetry is not obviously religious. Actually, it's a polemic, right? It's a contestation also of village priest, um, um, of masculinity in religion. So, you know, if you read more, and I can only show you a bit, you'll see also a fascination with figures of uh, Holy Mary, which are always plastic, actually. And that's it. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Eva. And I want to say that I have quite a few handouts of other poets if, if you are interested. I'm, I'm really happy we have such uh, uh, such a di we have those two different points of view. The let's say the, the radical and the, and the subconscious. Uh, and the what, what Eva said, which is which is I, I think substantial somehow for for the Polish Catholic writer. Uh, whenever you are a believer or not, uh, uh, the, the language of uh, Catholic uh, imagination comes to your poetry um, anyway. Um, we have last 10 minutes uh, for uh, uh, Christoph Keller. Uh, so being at this position, you need to summarize some kind of sum up the, uh, the discussion. Yeah. We, we can also run over a little bit. Yeah, because we would have yeah. to. Yeah. Megan, yeah, Megan is holding the food. We actually us, started so. 15 minutes later because people are still coming, so I hope you forgive us. Thank you very much. It's very polite and, and <laughs> I'm very happy that I can talk for 20 minutes or oh, half an hour. I'm kidding. I tried <laughs> to talk about 15 minutes. <laughs> over. Uh, so the question, I, I'm sorry, I changed my, my presentation. I wanted to talk to you about Polish Book Institute, but I give you some flyers about this institution. If you are translators or publishers, we can help you with your work in translation books, text from Polish language into other languages, into English language too. So, uh, but then I, 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 this was my the aim of the presentation, but then I decided to, to, to write something better than talk without uh, reading it, uh, because it's shorter. Uh, because I, 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 I am still, I'm a poet, an artist, and I'm still very deeply touched uh, by the question someone asked me uh, in front of the camera, how do you feel as Catholic poet? And this question was uh, very provocative for me. Uh, and I want to ex explain why Polish author uh, feels uh, not so easy when someone asks him to say publicly, yes, I am a Catholic poet. And I try to explain why we have in Poland this problem with type of, this type of presentation. So I, I, I won't be so optimistic uh, after especially today's lecture about um, um, the end of the world, at the beginning of the session uh, connected with René Girard, I think that we are in the times that we have to think about the end. So uh, the end of Christianity, the end of Catholicism, let's see why I try to explain you wh wh why this point of view of me is such a strange. We are from Poland, we are a Catholic country. We have, as Arthur said, started our Catholicism with 10th century. But our culture and the culture of Europe, probably you know it, it's rapidly changing. Uh, and these changes uh, are mostly connected with anti-Catholicism and anti-religion. Our culture, our contemporary culture, European culture, is completely secular. Uh, and its aim, this is probably the pessimistic point of view, of this culture is to destroy Christianity. Why I'm talking such strange things in the United States? Because I have been to Brussels, Belgium, to see the home of European history. This incredible exhibition, 
and about the history of Europe. But you know when this history of Europe starts uh, at this museum? At 18th century. There is no Dante, Aristotle, uh, St. Thomas, Aquinas, not at all. Slavoj Žižek and some other contemporary philosopher, Karl Marx and Vladimir Ilvich Lenin, etc., etc. This is Europe. We are living in such a world that we observe ourselves as Europeans. Uh, that we start from the uh, less philosophers of the 18th century. Uh, so it was rational, uh, anti-Christian uh, movement. Uh, and the second, from Poland, uh, example why I feel uh, that we are uh, living a special time in history, when we started to be a Vice, when I started to be a vice director of programming director in the Polish Bilby Institute, I proclaimed this kind of, you know, uh, credo that we want to uh, create a bigger, uh, wider spectrum of the literature, including religious literature too. And I was so attacked because of that fact. Uh, I was attacked because of um, clericalization, because of paro parochial um, perspective, um, and this idea was completely ridiculous as a something completely unnormal. You can't, you can't put a religion, religious books into the presentation of Polish contemporary religion, uh, contemporary literature. Uh, so. Uh, Again, we are schooled in Poland, in Europe, probably I don't know what about the United States, that your religion is your own business. You can be a very religious person, but you ought to be a religious person in church or at home, but never present yourself as a religious person, as a Catholic in the public sphere. This is something which is maybe not forbidden, but very difficult to present yourself uh, as, 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 as a Catholic writer or Catholic at all. Uh, so th th this is this. I'm coming back to this th the idea of this question that I just started to think. If I ask the question to colleagues uh, that we have uh, we have been seen them on the presentation, are you a Catholic writer? <laughs> oh, it will it will be a very difficult question for them to answer this question. For me, it's very difficult to public publicly say yes, I am a Catholic writer. Because in, in contemporary Poland, um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's very difficult to, to present yourself as a Catholic writer. Uh, why? Uh, because in our contemporary Polish culture, Catholic culture is viewed as a sectarian, parochial, and really not good aesthetically and ideologically. When you are labeled as a Catholic poet in Poland, it is like a death sentence <laughs> to your career. <laughs> Believe me, uh, it is very difficult to get important and prestigious grants, prizes, etc., etc. As a Catholic writer, you are out of the literary so-called distribution of prestige. You have, of course, some kind of Catholic niches that you can exist, but they are very small, very parochial, and not interesting at all. Uh, you are out of important uh, uh, contemporary Polish literary life. Uh, so this is why I, I found this question very provocative one, this question that you asked me in front of the camera. Uh, but it is very important and basic question, I think, at last, after this conference. Uh, and when we go back home, uh, go back to Poland, this beautiful Catholic Poland, <laughs> we have to think about the idea of the conference, which is similar to this. And I will write a letter uh, of invitation to my colleagues and asking them, but you have to decide if you want to be a Catholic author or, or not. Uh, I wonder uh, how many answers I get from them. Uh, 
this question is provocative. I, I just think about it all the time here. Uh, but because it resembles me another important question, you know this question, uh, a quote, but what about you? Who do you say I am? You know this quotation uh, from Matthias. And, but really, our answer to this questions, question makes us Christians. So thank you very much that I could be there, that I have seen this uh, conference, and then uh, I'm, I try to be a very brave man right now after these meetings, and then coming back to Poland, maybe you have to create this type of, this type of conference for Polish authors and trying to not have empty places without people at all as artists, because if I write to them, uh, we'll see what, how many of them will answer these invitations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. I'm afraid uh, our time is over. So we faced the dangerous question. We continue a little bit the discussion, or we start lunch. Lunch. <laughs> Who would eat when we can discuss? <laughs> um, the, the choice in between is to continue during the launch. Uh, but maybe, uh, yes? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think so. We, 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 have, to, we have to give you uh, the voice and, uh, and uh, maybe ask one question to three short questions. Be, 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 before, before the lunch be, before the lunch is finished. Well, I just got my hand up first. I don't know if this is a good question. I mean, this was a lot of pressure to only ask one fundamental question. Yeah. And so I, I shouldn't have put my hand up, but I did. Okay, now I'm wasting more time just plodding along. So, um, yeah, so it's actually for you, for, for um, Professor Grabowski, one thing is you just talked about the universalism of Catholicism in Polish literature, but my understanding is that it's really not so universal. One of my favorite Polish authors of all time is Bruno Schulz, and mm. he was Jewish, yeah. and also, I mean, other poets like Tuvim and that, mm. so I'm just a little concerned about seeing it as universal, and also I know that today, 99% or so people in Poland identify as Catholic, but there are, I know, small pockets of other Christians, uh, tiny pockets of Islam, etc. So is it really that universal? Is it really Catholicism versus secularism, or is there more nuance in the culture? I'd like, I, anyone can answer, I suppose. Uh, well, I, I, I may say like that, uh, 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 shortly. Um, they are, definitely, uh, uh, they are the so-called other uh, Christian denominations or the, the other, even the, the other religions. But uh, talking about the, uh, the influence of, on the culture, you know, they are, they have practically no influence. And even if you mention uh, a, a writer like, like Bruno Schulz, for, for example, you know, uh, Bruno Schulz, from the American perspective, is a Jewish writer. Uh, Jewish means more universal somehow than Polish, but from Polish perspective, he's a Polish writer. He decided uh, uh, to write in Polish because it, it was a conscious decision. You know, he, he at, at, at the moment in his life, he he was in between German and Polish, and he uh, had made a choice. You know, he decided to be a Polish writer. From the other perspective, he writes about. Pol uh, um, Polish Jews community in before the war in, in Poland, but his language is Polish Romantic language, the Romantic language of Polish literature. 
So from the, let's say, uh, aesthetic perspective, uh, from the perspective of, of writing um, literature, you know, uh, it is still being romantic, influenced by Catholic imagination. <laughs> Annexation. <laughs> Annexation, yes. It's <laughs> coming the action. So, to the degree that we, we hear anything about Poland in America, we hear a lot about the political changes that have happened in the last couple of years. How have those affected the literary culture and the general culture of Poland? Huh. I don't live there, but I imagine Pavel? it's even more complicated. Uh, I would say that uh, the problem of 20th century was to resist communism and, and, and earlier to, to Nazis. And there was, there was extremely important experience of uh, fighting against totalitarianism. And this is, this is uh, the most powerful message of Polish literature with a general global meaning for everyone. And, but now we are facing something uh, perhaps most difficult, that is um, modern secular order, modern uh, liberal democracy with all this, this ideology also. And we are specifically, um, uh, in, in Poland there are, um, there is a feeling that there are quite strange similarities between this uh, reality from 20th century, communism and, uh, and other calamities, and this, uh, and this uh, transformation which uh, lead to a to, uh, liberal order. So it it's might be striking. Uh, Professor Richard Legutko, which is a philosopher and published a book in English, I, I don't remember the English title of this. Oh, yes, yes. And he he's now he's a member of parliament, European parliament. So, and, and, and earlier he was, uh, he was uh, um, in opposition in, in Poland, underground opposition against the communist regime. Uh, so he, uh, he claimed that there are striking uh, uh, resemblances, but it means that uh, we face new problems and we need new answers, but we can, we can depart from the, from the uh, experience and, and from, the, uh, from that, that what was uh, expressed in, 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 in the great literature in, in 20th century. So there is a continuity and, and something new. So I want one because you know it's very good to say something after this. Uh, one short information for, for you. I, I just remember uh, from my youth this the, the moment when we get the independence after 1989. Uh, uh, I felt myself. I, I was a co-founder of this Brulian magazine that we have to we have to new open era in our uh, literary life. We have to stop this romantic tradition at last. We have to create ourselves as a completely new um, people. And uh, I, I still remember those hopes that we have in 90s, heading 90s, the beginning of 90s. The transformation process in Poland was very interesting um, uh, and full of energy from the business point of view as well. Anyway, then uh, came reflection that we did not create interesting art in beginning of in 90s. Uh, in 80s, our culture was involved in, let's say, struggle. And then we could not, as an uh, artist probably, uh, create, maybe um, not, not, great works, yeah, I think so, say, the great works. After the English death, we felt that this is kind of the end of the era, as, as Pavel uh, explained it. And we have to know, again, Herbert was another great poet, Tadeusz Rożewicz was another great poet, and after they gone, I can't no, And also, go. I think, because poetry of witness and resistance had resistance, it's like Hopkins Paul Castro, you know, which buffets the wind, and great works are actually created under the resistance, right? Now I think there is still some kind of resistance. There's more confusion of resistance because nobody knows with whom, right? And, and I think that era indeed was. Um, and, and also anger with Szymborska and Miłosz and great masters. A lot of poets are angry, young, young poets. They don't want to refer to them because they've been overfed, they feel. They don't want to feel them. They don't want to feel them. 
don't even need them. But do you remember her uh, Nobel's uh, Nobel Prize speech? She was always quoting Bible. Yes. You know. Yes. And in fact, you should come to Poland on All Souls Day because people bring cigarettes to her grave. She's very disappointed because <laughs> she has to smoke. You know. Yeah. <laughs> that composed by good people. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, but, uh, uh, there's, there's, there's one thing I, uh, <laughs> to be. Uh, uh, to clarify a, a little bit, and um, the, the religiously touched language uh, used in poetry comes out from the tradition of Polish poetry itself. You know, so uh, the, this is not like you're implementing any Catholic uh, vocabulary symbols or whatever. You know, you're you 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 inherit them. You, so once uh, being a poet, I mean, continuing the, the tradition of, of writing, you do it automatically somehow, you know. Uh, and this is not a religious declaration. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, the, the declaration that you belong, you know, to the greatness of, of, of Polish literature or, or something like that. And the second is the Polish writer uh, who uh, likes or not and the Christianity is aware that his re or his or her reader is uh, um, his or, or her reader um, imagination is Catholic. So he counts for the resistance uh, or or the uh, the answers or let's say um, radiance of of uh, of their imagination, you know, to his work. Using this language, and those, those I do not agree, but no time to talk about. <laughs> well, okay. That's you, typical you, Polish. We always fight. We get into this fight. Yes. Yes. Boxing yes. brings yes. people together. People. I mean, it's, it's on my side. If, in fact, if you come to Poland to a Polish reading, you will be attacked if you read because that's a Polish tradition. What he are was you talking was about? Man, he was you, you don't, don't listen to her. It's not true. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. I think you're hungry now.